Hello and welcome back to Tech and Test of Sweden. Today, behind me, I have the BYD Otto 3. This is a new car in Sweden. It has been around in China for a while now. This is BYD's smallest SUV or smallest car. It's in the Golf class. It's a bit higher, so it's like a cross crossover, not uh, really an SUV, but some, somewhere in the middle. It has a LFP blade battery. That's BYD's own battery, of, on, and that's 60 kilowatt hours gross capacity. So probably around 55 when it comes to net capacity. And it has a range, uh, just over 400 kilometers, 420 VLTP. And as you see, it's, it's not obviously an electric car. You see it in the grill, but it's not over-designed, at least not on the outside. So I'm going to test drive this now and see and compare it to, to the ID3 and also to the MG4 that I have been testing. So let's jump in and see. When it comes to the interior, here it's, it's a bit special. It's uh, very individual if you like it or not, but uh, it's a lot of details that you're not used to. For instance, you can play guitar on the inside of the doors. You also have it on the back door, so the kids can play guitar every day. Oh, door opener. That's original. Air vents. Very special. So, it's a creatively designed interior uh, with a lot of uh, different materials that I'm not used to. Uh, that feels different and looks different. And it's Obviously special, you have a big, big uh, center screen and an instrument cluster, like in ID3 and the MG4, a smaller one. We have the same type of uh, door opener and the same type of guitar strings in the back. And it's a pretty roomy back seat. Let me try it out. And. Yeah, there's enough room for me. I'm gonna adjust the front seats and see if it's enough or not. And uh, when looking at the front, it's a big screen. It's uh, almost the same as in the Tesla Model 3 and Y. But on top of that, you have the small instrument cluster behind or in front of the steering wheel. So it's uh, clearly a special design and a unique car. So I think this is a car that you like very much or don't like at all, because it's, it's original. Let's look at the boot. It has a boot space of 440 liters. Uh, that's good for this class compared to MG4 that only has 350. Uh, the ID3 also has less uh, boot, boot capacity than, than this one, but that's more close to this. When it comes to charging, you have the charge port uh, to the right in the front, a manual opener, and you have, of course, both DC and AC charging, CCS connector and a Type 2 connector. When it comes to home charging, this car has a flaw. It only offers you 7 kilowatts as a maximum power uh, when AC charging, and that's because it's only one-faced. So three-phase charging is not possible yet, but will be in the future. Uh, I don't know if it's a hardware thing or if this cars, the current cars will be activated or not. And when it comes to DC charging, it's also not uh, class leading. It's 88 kilowatts as a peak power. So that's uh, not the quickest charging curve in uh, charging peak. Nice ambient lighting. Blue rings, you can change the color. You have ambient here around the, the tweeter, under the screen. It's nice, you also have ambience in the back. Looks good. And for you guys that doesn't like horizontal screens, look at this. Huh? A turning screen. That's something the MG can't do. What do you think about that? I don't know why you should drive around like this, because uh, it's like a skyscraper now. But, I mean, it's fun. It's a cool thing. So let's take this car 
for a drive. It has a start button, so you need to start the car to start the ignition. The gear shifter works that way that you need to push the, the button on the side and pull it towards yourself, then it's in drive. So that's all. Uh, it's also conveniently placed and uh, it's a nice handle to hold. This is a front wheel drive car that has 204 horsepower. So the same as the MG4 and the ID3. Uh, but it has 300 newton meters of torque and does zero to 100 in 7.4 seconds. So it's a bit quicker than the MG4. So let's take it for a drive. Size-wise, this car is, feels exactly the same as the ID3 and also the MG4. So very similar size uh, interior and also when it comes to boot space. This one has a bit bigger boot space than, uh, than the other two cars. Uh, what I like with this one is that it has a lot bigger screen. Uh, the, both the MG4 and the ID3 has a bit too small screens. I mean, this one is enough. You only look, uh, look at it when you need to check your speed and some small things. But I, what I'm referring to is the main screen. It's a big, uh, nice looking main screen, uh, clearly running Android Automotive. That's a good thing, at least for me, I like it. Don't try to do uh, operating systems if you don't know how to. Uh, stick to what's working. And that's, that's very good. And compared to the other cars in the same class, as I said, interior space is the same. This car is a bit more like a crossover, so it's a bit higher. It's a little bit more as a SUV. And when it comes to interior design and shapes, it's obviously very unique. It's uh, very playful uh, and original. I think either you like it or you hate it. Uh, I'm I'm a bit in between. I can't say that I hate it. Uh, I, I probably need to get used to it. I like the seats. The seats are soft, better than the MG4 seats actually. So this car weighs in at 1825 kilos, kilograms. It's a bit heavier than uh, both the Renault Megane Tech, but also heavier than the MG4. So a good thing with a LFP battery, and specifically these uh, LFP blade batteries, is that you can always charge it to 100%. You don't need to leave it uh, at 80 or 90. You can fully charge every time, all the time, uh, without uh, deprecating the battery, uh, the battery life. And that's, that's great, because that means that you, you can utilize the whole range every time, not only on long trips. So let's try some acceleration and power. Yeah, it's clearly front wheel drive and you feel the torque steering. Uh, when you steer, it uh, behaves a little bit different than I'm used to. But uh, it's punchy, you don't need any more power. The torque is more than enough, 300 Newton meters. You feel the torque and it actually spins. And I must say that this car is a bit more silent than the MG4. It's on par with the ID3. Compared to the MG4, there is a difference when it comes to driving experience. Uh, when you compare a front wheel drive car with a rear wheel drive car that the MG4 is, this is front wheel drive. And you clearly feel that it's a bit harder for the car to handle all the torque on only front wheels. Uh, you get a lot of wheels, wheel spin when, when pressing it and it behaves, uh, as you heard, that it's easy to, to make the wheel spins. Anti-spin system is not as sophisticated as in other cars yet, or it may be caused by the, by the winter tires, but still it should be quicker to adjust the, the torque depending on the, on the grip. It loses the grip. Uh, several times during the acceleration. 
and I think it's a mix. I mean, the car is a bit too heavy to drive on the front wheels. And you, you feel it. So what to expect when it comes to, to range? I think it will be a bit hard to achieve the uh, 420 kilometers of VLTP range, but you can achieve 350 in, in good conditions and around 300 uh, when it's cold outside. And when it comes to price, this car is a bit more, it's a lot more expensive than the MG4. The MG4 is still like 100,000 sick or almost 10,000 euros cheaper than this car. So this one starts at 525,000 sec, uh, approximately 50,000 euros, compared to the 40,000 euros that the MG4 starts at. So this is more priced in line with the ID3. So it's a more expensive car. So BYD is leaning more towards the, the premium segment compared to MG4. Uh, so I think it also sits above uh, Volkswagen when it comes to to premium. So, but you feel it. It's it's a, it's very good materials. It's soft touch almost everywhere in the car, uh, and that should be compared to the MG4 that, and, and the ID3 that actually has plastic everywhere, hard plastic. It's hard to find the soft touch. This has hard plastic in the lower parts, but otherwise good materials and as I said the seats are very comfy and I really like the screen and the layout one nice thing is that you have physical buttons on the steering wheel and they are layout and form that way that you can with your fingers feel which button you have your thumb on that makes it easier uh, to avoid looking down when driving, uh, for instance, to raise the volume or use the speech control. So that's that's a, that's a plus. I know that ID3 or Volkswagen is is uh, going back to physical buttons on the on the steering wheel. Uh, so that means that a lot of people don't want this haptic touch buttons on uh, for such crucial uh, functions. You can all you, you can close your eyes and find the buttons on this on this steering wheel. That's good. And if you didn't know, BYD stands for Build Your Dreams. Almost sounds like a fake company in a movie. Maybe like in a Terminator movie or something. They, it's it's a big company. They are making great cars. Let's try acceleration again. Yeah, wheel spin, wheel spin, wheel spin, but it picks off good. It is a bit, when it comes to turning, it's, you feel that it's a crossover and the suspension is a bit soft, so it's not a sports car. It doesn't give you the, the expected support in, in, uh, in side movements. It bends a lot. So sharp turns in high speed is not the game of this car but it's not meant to, it's not a performance car. The pros for the big screen is that you really see the backup camera in a good way. You have, the, you have a nice uh, 3D view here. I mean, you had the same functionality in the MG4, but it actually, it's more present here. It's easier to see, it's easier to, to understand. A big screen really helps you. All screens that's smaller than 12 inch is actually too small as a, infotainment system. This looks really good. And you can make the car transparent. You have different views, a front view, side, and it's also, you see the car from above, from the side, in a side view. That's nice. And the software is very responsive. Let's uh, put that in park. Did you see that? Have you seen that before? A turning screen? So if you're looking for a premium SUV in the smaller C segment, this is a good alternative. It's silent, 
it's uh, fun because it's uh, very different when it comes to the interior design. I'm going to compare this to the MG4 in an upcoming video, so please keep your eyes open and uh, don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.